Donald Trump has kept the garbage commentary in the news cycle because on Wednesday night, he um, put on an orange safety vest. He had a Trump campaign decked out garbage truck. He went in there. He said 250 million people aren't garbage. He really um, denounced Biden Biden's uh, commentary there. Good. Do you think that impacts the vote at all? Does that get the couch potato to vote? Does that have any impact on this election? Well, uh, it's powerful images for sure. And as you said, the goal is to keep the media cycle going on the comment, just like the Democrats took uh, a comedian's uh, skit, uh, but it was an opening skit badly placed, I would say, for the, the Trump rally in Madison Square Garden, and they made a full media cycle. Right. Um, so I don't think it necessarily reflects the position of either of the candidates, what other people in their orbit said about different voting groups. But it's certainly something that you can use uh, in the media uh, to convince voters at this last moment. Ultimately, the biggest gap that we see that I feel will determine the election is this massive gender gap between the two candidates. Trump is winning men by 10 points, 53 to 43%. And Harris is women, winning women by 11 points, 53% to 42%. So in the last several days heading into the election, Trump has got to focus on women, especially suburban women, and try to convince them to vote for him. And in the last several days heading into the election, Harris has got to do something and has got to do something to correct the perceived wrongs of the Democratic Party and the Democratic rhetoric that men feel. Um, that's why they're breaking for Trump uh, so strongly uh, and for the Republican uh, candidate. And so both of the candidates have worked to do on the gender basis, but this is one of the bigger gaps. And it's the type of a gap that we don't really see when we look at um, uh, age uh, breakdowns. I mean, when we look at you know, 18 to 29 years old, Harris is winning them by seven points, 50 to 43 percent. That's to be expected. It's within uh, range. 30 to 44 year olds, um, uh, they are essentially tied 46 percent for Trump, 48 percent for uh, Harris, 45 to 64 percent. Again, tied 48 Trump, 49 Harris. And then 65 plus Trump is winning by five points, 52 percent to 47 percent. So the Differences in gender are significantly steeper than the differences in age. And this really brings you to issues like abortion uh, for women, but also the economy and crime and safety, and also for men, tabletop issues, jobs, employment, inflation, uh, but also, you know, cultural issues, right? And, you know, it's. Uh, uh, these are all at play in this final three days, four days stretch as we added to the election. Dreton, every day between now and election day, I'm going to quote you for something that you said a few weeks ago, but I want to get your opinion on it each day because the numbers are coming in, they're coming in hot, and every day is more important than the next. So a few weeks ago, you told me that Donald Trump had the edge. However, Vice President Kamala Harris had the momentum. Last week, you told me Trump still has the edge. It remains to be seen who has the momentum. Now, looking at these numbers from this overnight poll, who has the edge and who has the momentum? Um, I think that uh, I will I will anchor on another uh, uh, quote or framing that I had uh, in conversation together, which is the election has always been Trump v. Trump and Harris v. Harris. I would say that neither really has the momentum and neither really has the edge right now there's multiple paths to victory for both of them and this really boils down to three factors who makes the least number of mistakes between now and election day if there is an october surprise how do they re respond to their uh, to that october surprise and really brute force and what i mean by that is get out the vote and media pushes convincing that 16 percent of swing voters to really come out and decide. But I do want to convey one thing to viewers, right? That despite the heated rhetoric and despite all of the agita that our elections 
our modern elections seem to involve, American democracy is alive and kicking. And it's going to come down to the 16% who are yet to make up their mind. They tend to skew independent. They are issues-based voters. And they are going to make a very calculated decision on who the next president of the United States is. And it's not going to be based on passion. It's not going to be based on demagoguery. It's not going to be based on rhetoric. It's going to be based on who they think it's going to do a better job for the next four years. And that's something for all of us to uh, cherish because, you know, for all of its kinks and issues and problems, American democracy is working. Uh, but also to keep in mind that however this election is decided, and it will be a very, very tight election, um, the marginal voter would have spoken. So, uh, A, people should go out and vote and make sure that they are heard. But B, um, democracy sometimes comes down to the vote on one person or a handful of people. And that result has to be respected. And we have to move forward uh, for the sake of the democracy and the sake of you know building up and uh, uh, moving ahead, uh, moving the country ahead. So I think that there, there, is, there are positive tones to this polling and to this data, but it is going to be a squeaker. <laughs> and this is going to be one of the most difficult races for pollsters to call, for the exit polling to call, all the way to the last minute on Tuesday night.